traveler and a Paimon? We were just talking about you. This is more serendipitous than finding Mora after face planting on the road. <laughs> Hello, you two. How it's are you been doing? too long. I'll bet you have some thrilling new tales from your journey to fill me in on. I can see it in your eyes. Never a dull moment on this Tafat trip. Excellent. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What were you talking about before we got here? Something fun? Or oh, something delicious? And as always, <laughs> five minutes is all about, about the food. One certain traveler and how two's company, but three's a crowd, as the inseparable duo tore around to that. Making four friends here and five more there, often at sixes and sevens as they brave the lakes and seas, collecting pieces of eight and countless other treasures. <laughs> they clearly must have nine lives. Wait, wait. Let's hope they have less than ten deaths. Bro. Look at it. It just gets worse and worse. Hotel being hotel. We'll a grand banquet at Stonegate. All will be dressed to the nines for majestic food and fine wines. And after eight long drinks and seven shorts, they'll each write six lines five times. You've been to all four corners of the world, so in three short seconds, can you guess from these two stanzas of one speech each what this event is about? A poetry festival? Correct! It's a poetry gala, and Mondstadt and Liyue are hosting it together. Do you still remember the promise I made to the distinguished director who here during the lantern rite? Yeah, oh, so I remember that stuff. That's right. At the dinner table that night, I just knew this young bard was a rare talent with exceptional taste. You know, it's rare to encounter such a kindred spirit. And now, I finally seized the chance to collaborate. It took me much trekking across the land to petition Eugene Terrace and contact the Knights of Favonius, but eventually, in the spirit of friendship and poetry sharing, I managed to successfully organize the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. Bit of a weird name. Lewis poetry is known far and wide, and Mondstadt is the city of wine and song. With two nations teaming up, it'll be double the fun, and a great chance for people from both places to get to know one another. Hutao and I will be the co-hosts for this poetry gala. Of course, mm -hmm. I haven't studied the various forms and formalities of Liyue poetry for very long, so please forgive my dreadful performance just now. Not at all, Venti. You followed my lead most excellently. <laughs> you flatter me. Well, this sounds like fun. Let's get involved! Sure, I'm looking forward to everyone's poems. Oh! You'll be amazing! Remember that time in Liyue when Paimon gave you the first half of a couplet? Wind rises, winds never churn. You came up with the second half right away! But the sea of clouds, clouds away return. Oh, looks like someone's got a knack for this. Perhaps we'll have to raise the difficulty a little. Alright, so basically you guys are here to discuss the activities for the poetry gala, right? Oh, looks like little Paimon's brain has gained a wrinkle or two. You guessed it so effortlessly, but... You still guessed it wrong. What? Wait, Paimon guessed wrong? We came here hoping to invite a special guest. And that will be who? I already told you. I'm not going. Oh, hello this yo. Oh, How are you doing? Never having penned a verse myself. How can I hope to judge the poetry of others? Besides, afflicted with karma as I am, the raucous atmosphere you are cultivating is precisely the kind which I must avoid, as you well know. Hey now, there's a first time for everything, right? We all start from itsy bitsy spider, but give it a shot and you'll be wandering lonely as a cloud in no time. Right. And you don't even have to join us in person if you really don't want to. You can just watch the party from a nearby mountaintop and uh, cheer us on. But at least head down and take a look first. It's right by the inn, and there's plenty of fun activities to get involved with. It can't hurt to take a quick walk and check things out. Besides, with the renowned traveler here, what is there to fear? Join us. It'll be fun. <sighs> I'll consider it.
And he's gone. It's nearly time. Why don't you all head to the venue and take a look around? Quite a few of your friends should have arrived by now. Yes, that's right. Venti and I still need to discuss the poem for the opening ceremony. So, uh, we'll catch up with you later. Plus, our adeptus friend might need a bit more convincing. We'll see if we can coax him down. Gotcha! We'll be on our way then! Alright, the Waterborne Poetry Story Quest has begun. So let's start things off by heading over to the stone gate, which is right over here. I'll try and rest, I'll try and rest to um, speed run this um, story quest as fast as possible. Considering the fact that I only have like what, 20, about 27 hours to get so this lovely. done. Didn't think there'd be so many people here already. And a lot of them are familiar faces. Mm -hmm. Well, look who's here. This poetry fest seems to have attracted talent of the highest caliber. Hey, Shinto and Chanyun are here too! How are you guys I doing? I was actually heading into the mountains to train, but he accosted me on the way and dragged me here. Oh, how your words wound me. Is it not the responsibility of an exorcist of Liyue? To ensure that this celebration of friendship between our two nations stays free of evil spirits? Besides, this is an excellent opportunity to meet heroes who have come from far and wide. Surely, you must be curious as to how that heroine of Mondstadt was able to lift such heavy objects like they were but a feather. Are you talking about Noelle? Yeah, she's super strong! Oh. Well, the midnight so well from Monster. Could we trouble you to introduce us later? <clears throat> okay, fine. But don't forget to help me with my investigation like you promised. That's the only reason I agreed to come at all. Huh? What investigation? <clears throat> Naturally, I could never forget such a thing. My word is my bond. Relax, dear Paimon. All will be revealed in time. Uh, okay. Next! Okay, I see Diona. Diona! Traveler in Paimon? Uh, I didn't expect to see you here. Are you here to mix drinks? That's right! I was specially asked to attend this event on behalf of the Cat's Tale, and I'm also here as a mixologist representing the Mondstadt wine industry. Right. You're representing Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, you must be hating every minute of it. Of course I hate it. But it's also a perfect chance to destroy the reputation of Mondstadt's wine business once and for all. Opportunities like this don't come around every day, you know. Right. Huh? How do you figure that? <laughs> all I need to do is add some gross ingredients to the drinks. And I can create the most disgusting concoctions imaginable! <laughs> Nobody will ever buy wine from Mondstadt again. <laughs> right. Uh, Paimon thinks you'll end up getting the opposite result. Huh, just you wait! I ain't about to mess this up. Good luck. Are you gonna write some poetry with us too? Poetry? Hmm. I've heard plenty of bards sing in the tavern before. But I've never tried writing any myself. You should join in. It'll be fun. I doubt she if says. I have time. Okay. I was thinking she said I'm not interested or something like that. Now then, I'll go. Mika, Oh, it's the traveler in Paimon. Are you here for the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala as well? <laughs> You said that with a straight face? Is Paimon the only one who thinks it sounds weird? Are you here as Monsters representatives? Re representatives? Uh, no. Nothing fancy like that. We right. were sent here by the Knights of Favonius to help maintain order and set up the venue. Right. But... I didn't really do anything useful so far. 
Noelle brought all these tables and chairs here from Mondstadt by herself. She's a true knight. As expected well, of the true. midnight. Your efforts were indispensable. You selected the venue, drew up the layout, and so on. Also, you're the true knight here. I'm still in training. If anything, I should be addressing you as sir. What? No, 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 no. Please don't. Just keep calling me Mika. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I do not have okay? Mika. Yet. Anyway, Master Jane did say that as long as we keep on top of our work, we should take a look around while we're here and get involved in the poetry gala as much as we can. But I haven't written much poetry before, so I'm not sure if I'll fit in. I actually have the same concern. The important thing is just to participate. Yeah, plus you won't be alone. We're joining too. The Traveler's a really good writer, you know. Really? In that case, we'll try our best too. Perhaps. The challenge of writing poetry is a rite of passage that all who wish to qualify as a knight must eventually face. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. But anyway, no backing out now! See you soon! Sure! Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Oh, Mika beat me to it. I was gonna ask for help too. I'll teach you both. Okay. and melodies wandering the wind, wafting to pastures beyond their home. Two greedy fishies struggling to swim. They ate so much that they're starting to grow. Animal crystal fly draped in gold robes, a bright little light from that glazed lantern glows. And yeah, this, this is definitely poetry. While the forest of the forest anxiously roots. Welcome one and all to this festival of poetry. Jointly organized by Lua and Mondstadt. Or, in full, the Neighboring Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. We're your hosts, Liyue's verse monger of the darkest alleys, Hu Tao. And Mondstadt's liquor-loving lyricist, Venti the Bar. The purpose of this event is to promote friendly okay. poetic exchanges between our two nations. So please, have fun. Talk to other people and make some new friends. If you're here, you're our guest. So please enjoy this poetry fest. I'd also like to reassure everyone that this event welcomes people of all skill levels, from first time rhymers to seasoned songwriters. If you ask me, the most important thing you can bring to writing poetry is authenticity. That means reaching deep down to all the thoughts and feelings you usually hide away or struggle to express and putting them into words just right from the heart in whatever form you like. To help everyone really cut loose and enjoy themselves to the fullest, Venti and I have carefully prepared a three themes to be revealed over the course of three days. Let's get right to it. The first theme is Riddle Me This. Solving riddles, huh? Interesting. It's actually a pretty good choice for a warm-up activity. Whew. I'm glad they're not making us write sonnets or something right at the start. Does everyone see the lanterns hanging around the venue? These have been specially prepared for the riddle game. Okay. Simply write down your riddle and hang it on a lantern. Then Venti and I will select a few to pose to the crowd, and you will try to solve them. We'll now give you some time to write down and hang up your riddles. Feel free to walk around and talk with the other contestants to get the creative juices flowing. And remember, whoever guesses the most riddles correctly will get a prize. And with that, the Neighboring Nations Congenial Poetry Gala has officially begun! Alright, so let's start things off by viewing the very first poetry video which is right around here oh let's see what's on this lantern hmm a tender sigh for home how far the flowers roam a visitor asks me why for a dream beyond the sky 
Okay, someone from Leeward definitely wrote this one. I just read that one too. Liyue's poems seem pretty difficult to grasp. Dreams? Sky? Is it talking about some kind of bird? Um, so it means something like, uh, this thing's really far from home, it's in a vast area, and it's flying really high! Is that it? In a nutshell, yes. Oh, you're amazing, Paimon! Oh, that looks like I still have a lot of learning to do. Well, it's nothing really. Once you spend enough time in Leeway, you just sort of pick up on these things. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Back when I was out with the Grandmaster on the expedition, I started picking up some local customs without even realizing it. But back to the riddle. We still haven't actually solved it. What could it be talking about? Something that flies high and far. Hmm. Oh, that makes me think of dandelions. Oh, that makes sense. And Mondstatters believe that dandelions can carry your feelings on the wind. But maybe we're missing something? Well, it can't be that easy. After all, it's a riddle from Liyue. What would their equivalent of the dandelion be? If there even is one. What do you think, Traveler? Hmm. I think Dandelion is the right answer. Great! Then we'll have one answer ready to go when the game begins. The important thing is that it's authentic. Right! Just like Venti said. As long as the interpretation makes sense and reflects our perception of the poem, then perhaps there are no wrong answers. Well, no matter what the real answer is, the guessing's all a part of the fun! Let's go look at the next one! Oh yes! I want to see if there's any Mondstadt style riddles. Alright, on to the second one. I believe the second one is right over here. This one says Oh, this handwriting is just awful. Um I have four corners like a square pancake, but I'm stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. I pass through the lips one piece at a time. The more you consume, the broader your mind. Cake. Oh, well, Paimon's drooling from that this one. Is the, this one's definitely food related, but I don't know what it, gotta try but that. A square shape <laughs> Oh, Paimon, you have to look past the surface level meaning with riddles, or you'll fail to plumb their depths. Huh? So have you got any ideas, Shincho? <laughs> well... Singcho just hung that riddle up a moment ago. Uh... Oh, so this is Shincho's riddle! You know, Paimon was expecting you to write something a little more... elegant. Bruh. This festival is about building friendship and mutual understanding. With so many friends from Mondstadt present, I thought I'd try writing something more accessible and less flowery, so that more people could enjoy it. Hey, not bad! Uh, so buddy, does that mean you can tell your old pal Paimon the answer on the sly, or...? Oi! Not a chance. You'll have to wait for the answer to be revealed, just like everyone else. <gasps> If it's called feel, being fair, why you, don't you dumbass. Why stump me with a riddle of your own? Uh, maybe Paimon will! We'll see who stumped who! Traveler, you'll help Paimon come up with a riddle, right? <sighs> Gladly. Ha! At least you're nice to Paimon! <laughs> then I look forward to seeing the fruits of your literary labors. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's just continue and check out the third poetry video. Uh, even though Paimon said she'd write a riddle, Paimon really doesn't have any clue how. All bark and yet no bite. Brilliant. Um, on four long legs, my slim body sits. I eat not a bite and drink not a sip. With a passionless face, I greet countless guests, whom I carry all day.
day without needing to rest. Uh, is this talking about some kind of animal? The answer must be some other kind of object. It's a chair! Huh? Diana, how did you guess it so quickly? Wait, were you the one who wrote it? No, of course I didn't write it. The answer just popped into my head. I'm always telling the cats in the tavern that the chairs get tired from working all the time. So they shouldn't use them to sharpen their claws. Okay. Oh, okay. So a riddle needs to have a bait and switch. Are you trying to write one? Yep. And thanks to you, Hyman's just that of one. Oh, really? Maybe I should try to come up with one, too. <laughs> All right. Hyman's riddle is now hanging up. Diana, do you want to know the answer? Nah, no need. I don't really care about winning a prize. Oh, okay then. Well, looks like it's time to carry on with the event. We should regroup with the others. Sure, have fun. Alright, back to this. Hey, looks like everyone's about done mingling and riddling. <laughs> Gather around and look this way. Oh. Venti and I have selected There's several from everyone's blue head contributions, on the left side and we added screen. a few of our own to the mix for good measure. Shortly, we'll randomly select a few to read aloud. If your riddle gets selected, remember yeah, that you have the to announce deal. the correct answer at the end. Anyone who guesses correctly gets one point, and if nobody guesses correctly, the writer of the riddle gets a point. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> Of course, when the Riddler reveals the right response, it only counts if everyone agrees that it's not too far-fetched. That's right. Now, if there are no more questions, it's time to reveal the first riddle. Hopefully, they'll draw at least some that I can get. Oh no, does only the first person to solve it get the points? Ugh, that means I have to be first to raise my hand. Well, it, it's, it's called a competition after all. Riddle number one. Let me see here. Ugh. This riddle is, a uh, unique, um, especially the handwriting. Sing juice. I have four, co four, four corners, like a square pancake, but I'm st stuffed and seasoned and... Carefully baked, baked, baked. I pass through the shit lips, uh, one piece at a time. The more you. Uh, okay, this is consume. worse than the consume. one that since you wrote. The broader your might. <gasps> the Huta was about to use yeah, the F word. As, as you can. You don't want someone else beating you to it. Forward, I can uh, confidently declare uh, this answer wrong. I mean, how does eating pizza broaden your mind? Exactly. And while I'm no expert in exotic dishes, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> pizza is round, is it not? Like mora meat? Duh. Eating pizza makes you happy, and being happy makes it easier to face problems that need solving. Da -da. Okay, Paimon and Mitch, you may have jumped the gun on this one. Maybe it's some other kind of food. I don't know. Riddles are never that simple. And it needs to be something that makes people more intelligent. Oh, if Paimon had known it was going to be this tough, she'd have read more books in her time. Oh! Books! Huh? They're square and they got lots of big words baked into them. Every big word that passes through your lips as you read it out makes you smarter. Oh, gotcha! Books! The answer is books! <laughs> that was quite
quicker than I expected. I was quite proud of that one. Oh? It appears the Riddle Writer has announced the answer. Okay. One point to Paimon. Ooh, huh? So the answer was what? Oh, how did I not get that? Come on, Mika. Concentrate. <laughs> Relax, Mika, <laughs> would ya? Ahem! Oh, uh, what Paimon meant to say was that you're awesome at this. Thanks for I was the one that figured that out. On to riddle number two. Buddy! I gotta get in there first this time. High above the wispy clouds, Who's that? amidst the gloomy snow filled shroud, standing alone on an icy stage, uh, beneath it, every lowly sage. <laughs> Looks like a poem from Leela. Oh, it's. I got it! Uh, oh, uh. uh, looks like those two have some ideas. Hmm. Could be some kind of plant that lives in cold, high places? Wolfless. Mika, please go ahead. Wolfless microfight. Hello, man. You represent all of us from Mondstadt here. Uh, no. No, how could I? It was you who thought of it first. You should be the one to guess. My answer isn't necessarily correct. Besides, it's first come, first served, and you beat me to it. N no, I didn't. You were just before me. Uh, how gracious and considerate our fellow competitors are towards each other. A wonderful sight to see. <sighs> how about both of you say your answer at the same time? If you're both right, you'll each get a point. Fair enough. I didn't realize we'd made such a scene. Oh, crud. I guess we dragged that out a bit. Um, so, Noelle, uh, what do you say? Yes, let's. Our answer is... Cecilia. Cecilia. Okay. Oh, that certainly sounds like a good candidate for the correct answer. A flower that blooms on the highest peaks and known for its exquisite beauty. The Cecilia is held by many Mondstatters to be the true Windblue. Uh, although, since the writer hasn't yet come forward to announce the answer, this probably wasn't the answer they were looking for. <laughs> Sorry. Any other answers? Oh, I can't believe I was wrong. wrong. Maybe it's a plant from Liyue. Is the answer Qingxin? The poem does evoke a strong sense of quiet, proud solitude in a high place. Correct. I wrote this one. Jingxin is the oh. right answer. The real right... Okay. No! Shinjo got it before Paimon could. However, after listening to the host's description, I do remember reading about Cecilia flowers in a book once. They definitely fit the description of a pure flower standing proudly and alone on high. So... I'd like to approve the answer from our two friends from Mondstadt as well. Really? Oh, thank you so much! <laughs> well, since even the Riddler themselves agrees, all three contestants earn a point each! Darn it! She just got up to Paimon already! We're only just getting started. Yeah, you're probably right. Moving now to our third riddle. Huh? Why is the handwriting so... floaty? Floaty? What's got no wings but flies in the air, never gets tired of floating up there. So full of mora it comes out the nose, but in the sea, glug glug glug, down it goes. Uh... It's Paimon's. They picked Paimon's riddle. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, crap. What is it? Why isn't anyone guessing? Is Paimon's riddle too hard? That's not quite it. More like, it's so ludicrously simple that we just cannot believe it. What? No way! Well, go on then, tell us the answer if you're so sure. The answer is Paimon. Uh, what? It's Paimon. Yeah, it's Paimon. I was actually gonna say Paimon too. Me too. 
behind your back? Uh, no. You're always floating, but you never seem to get tired of it. And Paimon has a very healthy appetite, which must cost the traveler a lot of Mora and meal expenses. Thanks. I heard from the senior knights that the traveler rescued Paimon by fishing her out of the sea. So, that means Paimon can't swim. So if she fell in the sea, then... Uh... Yeah, I get you. Glug, glug. Wait, wait. Now Paimon's doubting herself. What was the answer again? Think about it for a moment. Uh, no, you're all wrong. The answer to Paimon's fail is obviously the Jade Chamber. You know, the Jade Chamber that's always flying up there in the sky? Is that so? Hmm. I still maintain that the riddle actually describes Paimon more accurately. In fact, if we just added two more lines to the poem, it would be the perfect riddle. Yeah. What do you want to add? The traveler's companion and talkative guide, a praiseworthy presence always by their side. Oh. Aww, Thanks. Can we really add that part? I can't vouch for it. More riddles and giggles fill in the air as time flies Guessing by. Riddles is a lot of fun, and even though Paimon didn't manage to beat Shinto, Paimon still feels like she got a little smarter. Oh, uh, didn't Chongyu mention he was investigating something before? Let's go ask him about it. Oh, over here. Paimon? You know, for a moment there, I was worried I might lose to you. Oh, are you collecting your prize right now? I am indeed. So, if you really want it, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. What? Seriously? Wow, what is it? Um... A most generous donation by yours truly, as director oh, of the Wangshou Funeral Parlor. Namely, a buy one, get one free coupon for our high-end <laughs> customized service package. It's a pleasant surprise to learn. You're so interesting, Paimon. <laughs> nope, nah, -uh, no thank you, hard pass, you can keep it. Are you sure? Hutao being Hutao. Here you are. Now remember, this package comes with our anytime, anywhere, on-demand collection service. Just give us a call and we'll be right there. Uh, with any luck, <laughs> we'll still show up even if you're <clears throat> unable to call. Right. So, to what do we owe the honor, Paimon? <laughs> what do you mean, we? Chanyun's the one Paimon's looking for, not you. Wasn't he saying something about needing help? Oh, yeah. Hmm. That. Oh, How about yeah. I put it in riddle form? Huh? Isn't the competition over? Twas like a demon not demonic, or devil devoid of the diabolic. Afar it floated free above the ground, but when approached, though sought, not could be found. Um... Sounds to me like you encountered a ghastly little ghosty in the wild. Perhaps I should just explain it. Basically, Lord. while I was training this morning, I suddenly caught sight of a non-human entity. It was floating in the air without any kind of external aid, and its body was almost transparent. At first I thought I'd finally encountered a demon that wasn't propelled by my pure yang spirit, and immediately prepared to exercise it. But none of my methods had any effect on it, and when I went to try and get a closer look at it, and try to ascertain what I was dealing with, it disappeared into thin air. 
Hmm, you're sure it's not a ghost or spirit of some kind? Why sure. am I getting the feeling that it's that it uh, some sort of Oceania? And if it were a spirit, I'm sure it would have been scared away long before I saw it. It's all my fault. I got overexcited, and in my haste, I didn't ascertain its true nature before taking action. Thinking back on it, I won't be surprised if it's some sort of Oceania. Considering the fact that we were still in the middle or of Fontaine Arc. You shouldn't blame yourself. It was something you'd never seen before. Anyone else would have reacted the same way. Besides, we're making up for it now by doing our best to find out the truth. Any thoughts, Venti? Have you managed to untangle Chong Yun's twisted tail? Hmm, why don't you take a guess first, Tu Tao? Oh, and that means you have. Any teams that he knows <laughs> of the, certain, the identity of sure this so-called demon. demon. So whatever it is, it's not dangerous. Hmm. How about this? We can incorporate a search element into tomorrow's poetry activity. Oh, does that mean we get to play outside while we write poetry? <laughs> Close, but no. Good ideas could just pop into your head out of thin air, but if you ask me, everyone should relax tonight and get a good rest before tomorrow. You say that, but your gaze keeps drifting over towards the wine stand. Venti being Venti after all. Oh! That's the end of part one? Okay. Right. Just get on with it. So, waterborne poetry slash hundred pace hurling rights. So, you get wow! Everyone got here so early. The sun is shining bright today. <laughs> as soon as that leaf floats past Stonegate, we shall reveal today's poetry theme. The theme of the second day of the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala is. Pairing couplets! Wow. Pairing couplets? Well, I've heard of that. It's a Leo A art form where you have to create new lines of poetry based on fixed rules. Kind of like a fill in the blanks game, but for poetry. Okay. Heaven and earth, rain and wind, the endless sky and the boundless land, forest boars and ocean shrimp, lavender melons and matsutake shrooms. Based on a given line of poetry, you must create the second line to form a pair or couplet. As long as you take inspiration from the wide oh, world around you, oh, long story you, short, is a um, so fill in the blanks. All, the two lines should be neatly matched, complementing each other. The both poetry version of fill in the blanks. Okay. In essence, it's just like most other forms of poetry. To bully your imaginations and allow the winds of inspiration to fill your sails. We've added an additional component, an inspiration walk. An inspiration walk? By inspiration walk, we simply mean wandering around in the wild, taking in the scenery and pocketing any poetic thoughts. Okay. Of course, to all our friends, old and new, please be careful while out and about. Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor is already fully booked for the month ahead. And if there's any more demand, I'll be the only one with a smile on my face. Right. In short, please roam freely as the mood takes you. Enjoy the spectacular scenery of our two beautiful nations and fill your imaginations with the most pleasing of poetry. We will all reconvene here tonight. Traveler, can you round up Sincho, Chongyun, and the Mondstadt contingent? I have a favor to ask of you. Oh, okay. is it that thing from yesterday? No problem. <laughs> Thanks. I'm counting on you. You gather the team and briefly describe what's really so, going on. We hope that each of you can keep an eye out for this while you're out on your inspiration walk. Are you sure this is okay? It was just something I ran into, and now we're imposing my business on everyone else. Well, please don't say that, Mr. Chong Yun. Master Jean ordered us to work with you however we can to improve cooperation. Helping each other out is exactly what we're here for. Besides, investigating any strange occurrences near Mondstadt and making a report to the Knights of Avonius is also part of our job. That aligns 
wouldn't either. Because while we're out, I can look for new cocktail ingredients, too. <laughs> Just think of it like an outing with friends. It'll be fun. No need to feel bad. The way I see it, you should just humbly accept their willingness to help. All right. In that case, thank you all very much. I will be sure to repay your kindness someday. Now, how about we split into two groups for the day? Uh, you mean to cover more ground? Not just that. Don't forget, this is still part of the poetry gala. If we all see the same sights and sounds during our inspiration walk, how can we write unique poems? Okay, at least Gatti has a point in the... Uh... But how do we decide who goes in which group? Why don't we draw lots? Fair yeah! enough. <laughs> That'll make things even more fun! Drawing lots? But what if I end up with the Liyue crowd? And I can't think of anything to say to them. I've got the slips of paper here. Who wants to go first? Oh, Paimon! Paimon wants to go first! Sheesh. Everyone draws a lot. Okay, so that's the Traveler, Paimon, Diona, and Chongyun in one group, and Sincho, Mika, and Noelle in the other. What a relief. Uh, at least I'll have Noelle with me. <laughs> then I humbly place myself at your instruction. Oh, uh, I don't think... Uh, th that won't be... I also await your guidance. No need to be so formal, man. Take care, everyone. See you all tonight. Aye. Did anyone forget to bring anything? If not, then let's get going! Dun, da, 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 dun, come on! Wow. Are those ears and tail real? So fluffy. Alright. Miss Diona, is there some place in particular you would like to go? <clears throat> Diona, since you're trying to find that thing you saw, why don't we start with the place you saw it last time? Fair enough. Sure. Then, everyone, follow me. <laughs> and Xiao is keeping an, an eye on all of this. Okay, part two, begin. <laughs> Cancel navigation on this one first. And just hit right over here. Let's go. What in the actual fuck? I totally forgot that I do have a, have an archer in my team after all. See me. Oh gosh. Right over there, next to the water. That's where I saw it. But it was a little foggy at the time, so I didn't get a clear look. Uh, the view from here is great, but there's kind of a gloomy atmosphere around here. Is this the kind of place you like to take a walk? I wasn't taking a walk. I come here to train. Train? Okay. Like how knights train for combat? Um, it's a bit different. As an exorcist of Liyue, my training involves practicing techniques for the exorcism of evil spirits. Okay. Exorcism? Yes, Chong is an exorcist. I've always wanted to demonstrate the power of exorcism, but it's a pity. I've never actually gotten the chance. Chong Yun is one in a million. He has pure Yang spirit, so as soon as he gets close, evil spirits run and hide. Huh? Isn't that a good thing? It's awful. Have you ever heard of an exorcist that's never seen an evil spirit? A lot of people think I'm a fraud because of this condition of mine. Your physical constitution is far rarer than the techniques oh, passed down yo. by exorcists today. You should treasure it. Conqueror of demons. Is that a friend of yours? Yep, this is Xiao, an adeptus of Liyue. An adeptus? Wow, I've never seen. 
seen one of those before. Uh, hello, Mr. Adeptus. Just call me Shao. So, are you here to train too? Are you out for an inspiration walk? When I heard about the exorcist encounter, my suspicions were roused. That's why I'm here. I've already informed the owner of the inn. If you see anything out of the ordinary, return immediately and leave it to me. I... Uh, oh... I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to drag even the Conqueror or demons into this. I have already patrolled the area and found nothing amiss. Either the anomaly you encountered was no evil spirit, or perhaps it already left. I guess that means we came all this way for nothing. If there's no other business, I'll be taking my leave now. We... Mm. Yeah, you should come. There's no one else around here anyway, so you don't need to worry. But... I would also be honored if you joined us, Adeptus Shao. It is a rare opportunity, and I have many questions about exercising evil spirits that I would like to ask you. <sighs> Fine. Seems like this Adeptus is pretty shy. Or maybe all the Adepti in Melee are like this. Team Changyun is a new member! Yay! Wh what? When did this become my team? Now that Adeptus Shao is joining us, if anyone's team leader, it should be... Don't overthink it! Uh, Diona, didn't you say you wanted to find some new ingredients? <clears throat> yeah! I don't get to come to Liyue very often, so I want to gather some new ingredients while I'm here. I've heard that Liyue's Jueyun chilies can set your throat on fire. Is that true? <laughs> I'm gonna mix them into my drinks and give it a try! That evil out uh -huh. Jueyun chilies? Um, I'm not sure that would taste very good. Really? Let's go pick a whole bunch of them. What the? Oh boy. As well as Dragon chilies, I also need some slime condensate or loach pearls. Are those really fit for human consumption? This is starting to sound like something Shaolin would make. Fuss. Okay, this should be enough. Diona, you seem really committed to, uh, making alcoholic drinks available to people of all tastes. What? No, never! I hate alcohol! When grown-ups drink too much, they get that stupid drunk <sighs> look on their faces, can't speak clearly, and don't even respond properly. Sometimes, they just sleep on the floor all night. Alcohol is the root of all kinds of evil. So, I'm on a mission to mix the most disgusting drink in the whole world and show everyone just how awful alcohol really is. Nothing can stand in my way. If it means coming out to Liyue every day to pick fresh Dreyu chilies, then so be it. Hm. Um, is it really worth all that effort? Uh, yeah, because all my previous efforts have failed. Those stinking booze hounds not only haven't woken up to the truth of how bad alcohol is, they even keep praising my drinks. It makes me furious! Whoa. Uh, how is that possible? If this is the kind of stuff you're throwing into their drinks, it must taste absolutely vile. Surely. Hmm. Why do you do this? Are you so? calling me a liar? Well, if you don't believe me, I'll fix you a drink right now. Then you'll see. Uh, uh, no, no need. I. Uh... Huh, just you wait. Dude, it's getting dark oh, no. already. Is she really going to add those Juyun chilies? If her claims are true, perhaps she too possesses a unique constitution of some kind. 
I don't see how it could have anything to do with her. Unless... She's under the influence of some kind of power? Maybe an evil spirit? No. I sense no trace of the demonic in her. Although there are traces of something else. Something rather special. Okay. In Mayue, we might say this child has adeptal affinity. It's ready! Here, I made one for Xiao too! Here's the... <sighs> Oh, boy. Look at that color. Yep. She definitely added Julian chilies. Okay. What's wrong? You're not allergic to anything, are you? Don't worry. There isn't even any alcohol in it. It's a slight condensate base with a seasoning of Yun chilies and finished with frog legs. Dude, oh, sure. just by hearing the sound of it, that's... Wait, this can possibly taste that good. Sounds that's it's gonna be awful. Oh. And Zhao ended up drinking uh. it. Xiao downed it in a single gulp. Oh, great. If the conqueror of demons drank it, it'd be rude of me to refuse. Oh. Chang'an drank it too. Uh, is he gonna be okay? This Oof. drink is delicious. Damn eyes, though. Ju Yun chili, but it isn't at all overpowering. It's completely different from Shangling's cooking or those drinks Singcho makes to mess with me. It's crisp and refreshing, with just a hint of numbness, and the Ju Yun chili flavor combines with the smooth but not slimy texture of the frog legs to and form all a heavenly of a sudden... mixture. And oh, the Chong slimes! Can we talk about the mode. slimes? Before this, I never knew that they had such a pure and herby taste, like fresh grass after the rain. The power and purity of nature distilled into a cup. Amazing! Simply unbelievable! That's right! Slimes are absolutely sublime! Oh, I failed again! <sighs> but wait, what's gotten into Chong Yun? He's been so quiet up until now. Uh, are you okay? I'm great, and I gotta try another. Diona, if you please, one more. At your instruction, Diona serves Chongyi I... with an ice uh, full of... Uh, oh. oh. Okay. I think I've calmed down a bit. Hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. I can't believe I let you all see me like that. It's fine. My fault for not checking your spice tolerance first. Oh, looks like this Purian spirit isn't such a great thing to have after all. Actually, before I drank it, I very much doubted what you said about your drinks. Uh. Uh. Oh, what about it? Diana and Chongyun are actually kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Now what? What's wrong? Look over there. You mean the leaf? Something's written on it. What? You can see that from over here? Let's grab it and take a look. Oh yeah! Or don't get swept away! Aye. There's a poem written on it. The Conqueror of Demons has truly amazing vision. The sky at night blossom with flowers, the stars at night hum like bees, in search of nectar and of dreams, and we that night were as new as the dew, under the moonlight flowing like silken honey. Our words sweet as is said by the spring, but I turned and left you alone. The poem in my heart left unspoken, and since then, the stars do not twinkle, the moon is ice cold, I hide them near the water, but your tears fall and find them. Hmm. It sounds like the author is writing about the first time they met their true love. Although the following lines suggest that they didn't end up together. Why write a poem on a fallen leaf? The flowing waters are ruthless. They carry the leaves away with the current. 
This poem would likely have vanished into the void had we not found it. It makes no sense to me. Sometimes people write poems simply to express themselves. That's true. I've heard Sincho say something similar before. When there's things that you're unable to say, or just never had the chance to say before it was too late, if it can be put on paper, it can be expressed as poetry. Is it kind of like wishing at a fountain? I used to do that sometimes when I was little. So, that means that our mystery poet was probably hoping that someone would read it, right? You think? Then, should we write a poem in reply? But we don't know who wrote it. How can we reply? Yeah. True. Why not go upstream? 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 Why? The ink looks fresh. It can't have been written too long ago. This withered leaf floated down with the current. If we travel further upstream and drop a leaf into the same waters, it should be carried down past the original writer. Okay. <laughs> Communicating with a mystery person using poems on fallen leaves! But how do we make sure that they'll receive it? We can write extra copies and drop the leaves in different places. As they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Surely at least one of our leaves will find a path. Either way, it's our only option. Then let's make like a tree and head upstream! And upstream we shall go. So how? Oh, over here. Whoa! What the? What am I doing? Finish writing it. Amidst the dark, fireflies aglow, pebbles unmoved by the stream's flow. If words yet remain and love holds to the last, against the world can the small stand fast. In honey moonlight, may you once more bask. Like the idea of getting involved has grown on you. Things you never had the chance to say before it was too late. When silence is the final word, we mourn the loss of things unheard. I have little talent for, nor knowledge of poetry. The least in the water! Look, it's like a little boat! Merrily, merrily down the stream, life is but a dream. Yeah, yeah. We should probably pick up the pace. We still have a few more leaves to set afloat, and we need to get back before it gets dark. Okay, well, it's already dark go. anyway. Uh huh. What's this? You two having a private chat? No, it's nothing. I just hope this isn't all in vain. Some time ago, in a team far, far away. <laughs> Okay, why am I getting a... Uh... What's with the Star Wars reference? Uh, the scenery here is quite beautiful. Let's pause here to seek some inspiration. Should we set up camp? Oh, please wait a moment. I'll pitch the tent. What's with it's the Star Wars reference? Walk. There's no need for all that. Okay. Well, I'll conduct reconnaissance nearby to ensure this area is safe. And see if I can't scavenge any firewood or food while I'm at it. Oh, Wait, gosh. reconnaissance? It means survey the environment and plant a route forward. It's the foundation of all operations while out in the wild. Are all inspiration walks in Mondstadt this complicated? <sighs> They're acting like this is completely normal. Am I the weirdo here? 
Oof. In that case, I'll conduct reconnaissance with Mika. Huh? Oh, okay then. Crumbs. Now I have to try and make small talk. Should I mention the scenery? Uh, the weather? Very well. Then leave the camp to me. Just teleport myself right over here, thank you very much. Go on a walk to get some inspiration. Okay. Here is quite beautiful. Let's pause here to seek some inspiration. Should we set up camp? Oh, please wait a moment. I'll pitch the tent. Wait. It's an inspiration walk. There's no need for all that. Okay. Well, I'll conduct reconnaissance nearby to ensure this area is safe and see if I can't scavenge any firewood or food while I'm at it. Wait. Reconnaissance? It means survey the environment and plan a route forward. It's the foundation uh, of all operations while What just happened? Wild. Are all inspiration walks in Mondstadt this complicated? They're acting like this is completely normal. Am I the weirdo here? In that case, I'll conduct reconnaissance with Mika. Huh? Oh, okay then. Crumbs. No, I have to try and make small talk. Should I mention the scenery? Uh, the weather? Very well. Why am I re really watching this scene again? So, Sincho, uh, do, do you, um, go on inspiration walks often, or, or, uh... I do. I always get bored when I'm cooped up at home, so I head out for a stroll. Life gets busy. You have to steal a moment of leisure when you can. Cool. Uh, oh, over there, firewood. Yeah. Rain cutter. Rain outlines your fate. Final warning. Okay. Okay, done and dusted. Next. With this wood and the food I brought along, that was we can definitely put together a decent lunch. You've got quite a knack at wilderness survival. I'll give you that. Thanks. I... I was on an expedition with the Grandmaster of the Knights of Vavonius for a while, not too long ago. I was in charge of surveying and mapping. Oh? You sound like a character from an adventure novel. Charging across the world, sword in hand. What? Uh, no, I'm nowhere near as amazing as all that. If I really run into a powerful enemy, I always leave it for someone stronger to deal with. You're too modest, Mika. A hero is measured not by the blood on his sword, but by what's in his heart. As long as a righteous heart that yearns to aid others beats within your chest, no matter where you go, or what you have achieved, you may be called a hero. That all sounded pretty profound. Oh, I've never even thought about any of that before. Hello? Are you okay? Maybe we should return. Lest Noel be forced to wait on us. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Go back to camp and talk to Noel. Got it. 
Let's make it oh and she has already um, created a tent. For the peeps to camp. smoothly? Do you need a cloth to wipe the sweat from your brow? No need, thanks. All clear. There's no danger in the vicinity. The team lights a fire and starts preparing lunch. Before long, a delicious meal is ready. Noelle, well, your cooking is amazing. Every single dish is so tasty. Truly astounding. I never imagined it was possible to enjoy such a satisfying meal in the great outdoors. Really? As expected then of what the do you usually eat when you're out on an inspiration walk? Oh, well, since I usually sneak out from home, I just grab some dried snacks to take with me. Add in whatever fruit I pick along the way, and that's my lunch. By Oof. sneaking out, you mean running away from home? Yes. That's right. Or sometimes I'll tell a cover story like I'm going out to take care of business. But if you get caught, won't you get disciplined? Oh. So, just don't get caught. <coughs> huh. mm. Anyway, right. did anything interesting come up while you were out scouting? Well, Xing Cho and I talked about what it means to be a hero. Now that I think about it, by Xing Cho's definition, you should be considered a hero too, Noel. Ah. Uh. Me? You're always happy to help everyone in the Knights of Favonius. Not only that, but whenever we're out training, you help out the citizens of Mondstadt. Oh, remember that time when a giant boulder was blocking the road? You cut it in two with a single blow. Oh? Sounds like she has both a heroic spirit and incredible martial prowess. Don't. Oh, please don't praise me like that. We should talk about what we came here to do. Finding inspiration. Miss Hu Tao said something about pocketing our poetic thoughts. Mm. But so far, all we've done is gather some firewood and cook lunch. Mm. I have no idea what to write. You can write about anything. Looking at Cor Lapis, one can't help but wonder if one's own heart is as bright and clear as Jade. Observing Silk, so bright and beautiful, one pauses to consider whether it ever feels the sadness and sorrow that humans do. So, we have to connect our internal world with the external one? Exactly. But that's just one of many possible methods. Perhaps you might gaze out at the bridge in the distance, and see a woman leaning on the railing. Oh. Looking as if her heart is laden by sorrows that even the rushing waters below can Hold on a second, away. wasn't that the same huh? lady as we saw Wait, in the first part of the story quest? She wrote one of the riddles we answered. Yeah, that's Why the don't key. we go say hi? And Noel joins the crew. it is that we meet again uh, hello are you here on your inspiration walk too yes allow me to Can introduce you guys ourselves this? i am Xing Her eyes are glowing. and this is noelle and mika she's definitely not a normal human thank you for accepting our answer to your riddle yesterday oh don't mention it it's all in good fun i'm kelly roy so miss kelly roy kelly roy are you from fontaine that's right. I was traveling in the area and just happened to see there was a poetry event being held at Stone Gate. It looked fun, so I thought I'd drop in. First of all, Mika, how do you know that this it was uniquely Kelly Roy is from Have you studied Fonte. Rue poetry before? I haven't, actually. I've just picked up a few things here and there from chatting with people throughout my travels. Amazing! So you're a natural poet. We noticed you standing on the bridge from quite some distance away. Are you drawing poetic inspiration from the flowing current beneath your feet? <laughs> I haven't finished my poem yet, but 
the water here was just so peaceful and calming. I stopped for a moment and lost myself in admiring it. Well, since we're all here, why not head back with us to the venue for tonight's festivities? It's getting late after all. Huh? Are, are you sure? We can walk yes. and talk. Perhaps the mingling of ideas will give rise to new inspiration. I personally like to hear Miss Callie Rowe's couplet. I'm sure I can learn something. <laughs> well, if you're all in agreement, I've got no reason not to join you. The group walk back to the venue laughing and joking as they go. The others have yet to return? Yes. <laughs> Come on! Let's hurry! <sighs> we... Oh, 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 we're not too late, are we? Nah. Just how far did you all go? Right on time. <laughs> Everyone catch your breath. Come on, deep breaths. One, two. Now, don't panic. The party hasn't started yet. Okay. <gasps> We made it! Oh, Paimon's exhausted. Since when do you get tired from flying? Paimon gets tired if she has to fly too fast! Oh, not to mention dropping all those leaves. Paimon's hands are cramping up. Huh. Sounds like someone needs to exercise more. Oof. Huh? You guys picked up a new teammate while you were out? Indeed. This is Kelly Roe. I believe you'll remember her from yesterday, though you weren't introduced. Hi, everyone. Hello there. Hello, but you're not the only ones who's called in reinforcements. <laughs> Look who we got! Wait. Xiao? Where'd he go? Xiao being Xiao. Xiao. Don't expect you to appear in front of the <sighs> an audience. <clears throat> now that we've all regrouped, let's... Huh. Scratch that. Looks like we're still waiting on my co-host. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they say oh. roosters crow at first light, and finches go to bed at night. But Director Who tells always on the ball, anytime, anywhere, she'll answer your call. Are the theatrics really necessary? We're already on day two of the festival. The opening ceremony is over. Yeah. <laughs> but my dear, dear Paimon, it seems you are not yet aware. That was not for my own sake, but for a special guest who's joining us today. And that is? Director whose manner is as exuberant as ever. It always makes quite an impression. <laughs> oh boy! Now this is a surprise. Mr. Zhongli, I hope you are well. Xingqiu, what can you tell me about Mr. Zhongli? Ooh. He seems like somebody very important. Didn't expect Mr. Jiu yes. Daddy to He's be in the house. In Harbor. He's extremely erudite in many different domains of knowledge. Allow me to introduce you all to Zhongli, a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. His expertise is limitless, searching from the celestial orbs to the terrestrial ores. Spinning modern and ancient culture, delving into literature both prosaic and poetic. He may be my subordinate, but he is a certainly a qualified poetry expert. And so, we have invited him here tonight to judge the compositions. The director exaggerates. I am but vaguely acquainted with a few lines of classical Ooh. poetry. Should you consider me to be me remiss up. in my appraisal of your own compositions, please correct me. Ah, yeah, enough with the modesty already. If I didn't know better, I'd say you seem nervous. Just focus on judging. Please rest assured that I shall rise to the occasion, Director. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four. Great. Equal numbers on both sides. Good. Uh -huh. Are you counting me too? It'll be fun. Okay, fine. But consider this a favor. 
with our Fontaine friend present, perhaps we should rename this event to the Three Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. Also, I'm just noticing that Paimon should only count as a half teammate at most. Hmm. That kind of puts Team Traveler at a bit of a disadvantage. Oof. Well, how about this? I'll join in as well. Director Hutel, here to help out in your hour of greatest need. What does everyone think? Naturally, the more the merrier. Being the host of the festival shouldn't stop you from having the chance to enjoy it like the rest of us. Then, it's settled. Everyone else in the audience, feel free to join in too and support your favorite team. What about me? Shall I keep track of the score? No need for that. The teams are just a formality. We're all friends here, and this isn't intended to be competitive. But what do you think, Judge Zhongli? I concur, Director. Moreover, it would be disingenuous to impose upon our friends from Mondstadt and Fontaine a competition in which they are judged on how rigorously they can adhere to Leo poetic conventions. Since this is a congenial poetry gala, should we not begin with inspiration and finish with friendly conversation? The aim being for all participants to enjoy themselves. Oh, <sighs> that's a relief. I was so nervous about this, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty relaxed. Couldn't have asked for a better judge. Zhongli said everything I was supposed to say only far more eloquently. So, without further ado, I shall pass the baton to Venti. No problem. The Animo Archon and the Geo Archon the on the same stage. Of our poetry gala will now commence. Wow, Back just wow. Perhaps I could break the ice with a humble contribution to inspire others to share their brilliance. Please listen to the first line in the couplet. <clears throat> Lounging in luxury inside a Shinue kiosk booth. Delighting in countless contemporary tastes. What? He managed to think of one already? Oh, he seems like a real expert at this. Hmm, Shinyue Kiyas. Should that be paired with Lily Pavilion? Or are they too similar for a couplet? Oh, this is pretty difficult. Shinyue Kiyas. Contemporary tastes? Hmm. I guess I should pair the modernity of their VIP dining experience with an emblem of the past. Ah! Maybe where I was training that one time. That was quite ancient. The weather was terrible that day. Okay, I got something. Go on. Surrounded by history, outside a Tianghong Pass pavilion, as lightning sets the boundless ten of her skies ablaze. Wow! Tianyun completed the couplet! Hmm. Xinyue Kiosk is a renowned modern restaurant, while the mountain pass of Tianhong is a prominent historical landmark. These two iconic locations form a complementary pair. The imagery also contrasts rather well between the two halves of the couplet, one half describing a leisurely and comfortable indoor scene, the other portraying a hazardous outdoor scenario where there is no protection from the elements. Huh? I was just describing what I experienced that day. <laughs> I guess I just got lucky. Exactly. All right then. I guess I'll start the next couplet. Mind pines for Mingyun. Flesh confined to Qingsa. Spirit striding high on Zhu Yun's clouds. Oh, Chang Yun, you dark horse. Looks like you came to play today. This conjures the image of one with lofty aspirations, whose life is limited to a small town but who awaits the opportunity to one day ascend above the clouds. The use of various locations for their symbolism is quite novel indeed. Oh! Soul shines like jade stone, dressed in finest silkware, lucid heart still beats within me now. Wow, how did Noel do that? Mm. A superb line. It employs the metaphor of precious stone to describe one of noble and moral character with a pure and clear heart. The symbolism in this case is centered around objects, truly the work of a skilled poet. That was a commendable couplet. 
Mm -hmm. All thanks to your guidance while we were out on our inspiration walk. I'd like to start the next couplet. Up into the misty karst, down among the grassy marsh, all for lotus seed and bird egg soup. Lotus seed and bird egg soup? What is it, Diona? Did you think of a second line for the couplet? No. Everyone's poems are so complicated. I need more time just to understand them. But when I heard lotus seed and bird egg soup, it made me think of berry and mint first. Maybe because I mixed a similar drink recently. <laughs> North beyond the Starfell Whoa. Lake, south across the windswept plains, just for berry squeezed and mint infused. No wonder everyone praises the traveler so highly. Oh, well, that's so quickly. something. Both halves of this couplet require intimate knowledge of the terrain in question and the local plants that may be found there. The two of you are clearly both seasoned travelers. Does this mean I helped? Yaka! You saved the day. Hey now, Zhongli. Don't just praise everything you hear. You should question and press them a bit. Don't worry about upsetting anyone. After all, I'm here to take the heat. Right. And allow me to try another. Qingxin has no heart. Still, it soothes the human heart. Is she talking about the medicinal effects of Qingxin? Hmm. This is a hard one to match. The Xin part of Qingxin means heart, but the flower itself has no heart. I got it. Sweet dream is no dream, yet it nurtures people's dreams. Sweet dream? Does that really match? Hmm. Since the suitability of the match has been queried, I shall act according to the director's wishes and ask you, what is the link between sweet dream and Qingxin? Sweet dream is a type of dessert. <laughs> uh... Actually, we sleep peacefully at night because Xiao is there to protect everyone. <laughs> then I agree. The two halves of the couplet match. This point is well deserved. Points for me, points for thee. This judge gives out points for free. <laughs> but if you ask me, everyone's being a little too conventional so far. Let's push the envelope a little. Go nuts! Oh? In that case, why don't you finish this one for me, Hu Tao? Round moon in the heavens, full moon at night. Celebrate with circle of friends. Hmm. Oh, square meals in the basement. Big bowls of rice, decorate with cuboids of meat. Huh? What the? Ah, we have ourselves a pedant's couplet. The uh, two halves have no thematic connection, yet each word has its perfect parallel, meaning the two halves do form a cohesive whole. The strict pairings make this no easier to achieve than a thematically coherent couplet. Blah, 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 blah. So <clears throat> verbose. Zhongli, just tell me if I got a point or not. Of course you did. I presumed it went without saying. Ahem. Through Zhongji. I walked a hundred miles. At Guili, I ended my march. In Dihua, the silver grass grows in two styles, but horsetails don't trot out the marsh. From vendors, I bought some fifteen steaks. At dinner, I sizzled the lots. At pressure, the tenderloin cooks in two ticks, but fifteen won't fit in the pots. Huh? So that's a pedant's couplet. She can do that too. I thought of one. Wolf hooks can't hunt fairy bunny. What? Aw, that's a cute couplet. Sweet flowers can't out sweet sister Barbara. Well, that's random. Huh? <laughs> now, that's the passion we like to see. Although, unfortunately, your response was technically one word too long. 
Hmm. In that case, Whopper Flowers can't whop Jumpy Dumpty. Oh, this monster's got talents. Whew. I'm so relieved. I at least managed to get one. Hmm. I'm so at a loss right now. Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove. Reading through the heart of Clear Springs. <sighs> wow, Noel came up with another one! Come on, match the couplet! Paimon knows you can do it! Why don't you try it, Paimon? Uh, do you really think Paimon has what it takes? Match each word one by one and you'll be fine. Fine! Paimon will give it a whirl! Nestling by a roaring fire, Scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. Hmm. Uh, seething in the pouring rain, sword of pain swipes at my foe, beating up the eye of the storm. What? Really? Yes, very good. The image of challenging powerful foes in the harshest of conditions seemed to manifest before my eyes. And it was perfectly juxtaposed against the atmosphere of leisurely reading with a cup of freshly brewed tea. Really? <laughs> Maybe Paimon has a knack for this after all. <laughs> it appears that my services as a judge are no longer needed. In high spirits, the laughter and couplets continue. As the host declares the day events over the cover of lovely ladies' persons. Paimon's so happy! Paimon managed to match a bunch of couplets at the end. You did hear them all, right? I really enjoyed myself, too. Oh, I never knew Leo's couplet poetry was so much fun. You were amazing today, Noel. You had so many couplets. Paimon especially liked your one about reading Hearts of Clear Springs. Paimon never could have thought of that! <sighs> Kelly Roy? Miss Kelly Roy, are you okay? You look like you're getting tired. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. But thanks for asking. Although, I do have a question I'd like to ask. Have all of you read Heart of Clear Springs? Um... No, nope. I haven't actually read it. My dad told me the story once. It's about a spring fairy and a young boy. Oh, yes. The story of a spring fairy who left her homeland and met a boy under the moonlight in a faraway land. The boy poured out his heart to her, and she listened to his stories. Over time, the boy grew up and began to develop feelings for the spring fairy. But the Spring Fairy didn't understand human love, and was afraid that making a promise to him would ultimately end in tragedy. And so, um, ooh, I don't know if Diana's father mentioned the part about the kiss to her. In the end, the Spring Fairy left the boy, and was never heard from again. Oh yes, that's it. Many years went by, and the boy became an old man. But he never stopped believing that the fairy was real. And not just a dream. Mm. Sounds like a tragic tale. So, what do you guys think of the spring fairy in the story? I'm sure she made her decision with the best of intentions. But the boy couldn't hope to understand why she left. It's a shame that the misunderstanding never got cleared up. Well, do you think she should go back and see that boy again? If she ever had another chance? Now? man by the end of the story? Hmm. Isn't it a bit late? What if it just led to more regrets? Oh, sorry. Oh, maybe I'm being too pessimistic. If Paimon was that boy... Hmm. Actually, Paimon would definitely want to see the Spring Fairy again, no matter how old Paimon got. After all, she's the love of his life, right? I see. I won't be surprised oh, if the... It looks like the party's still going strong over here. Are you coming up with more couplets? Need my help? Sit 
the hosting, Tone Deaf Bard. <laughs> if you get involved, you only match every couple yourself and not leave any for the rest of us. <laughs> I never knew you had such a high opinion of my abilities, Paimon. But the couplet games are all over now. Tomorrow's theme is freestyle poetry. Do we have to share our own poems with everyone? That's right. If you're not feeling confident, don't worry. It's never too late to register for Fenty's Poetry Cram class. Right. I'll sign up. Really? Oh, me too. Really? Hold on there, Buster. Before you start peddling your classes, just how much freedom is there with this freestyle poetry exactly? Aren't there any requirements at all? It's as free as the winds that blow. And there's nothing freer. There are no limits to genre, form, content, or anything else. So long as it comes from the heart, you're welcome to put it into poetry. Give it a try. There's no better chance to express your innermost thoughts. Whoa. That's almost too much freedom. Paimon can't decide which way to go. Our travels? Or maybe all the food that the travelers cooked for Paimon. Sorry. Will you come too, Kelly Marie? Paimon wants to see what you write. Oh, um, yes. I'll be there. Ugh. Ugh, my nose is starting to itch again. All right, I shall leave you to privately ponder your poems and bid you all good night. See you tomorrow. All right, that's the end of part two. Heart of the Deep. Wait until the following day, 8 till 10. We're a few people short today. Morning, friends. Sing Cho said he wants to take some time and focus on writing poems, so he'll join us later. Noelle has other duties today, so she asked me to tell everyone not to wait up for her. I. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. What about Kelly Roy, though? She said she'd be here. I got here really early, but I haven't seen her yet. Are you talking about the girl with the blue hair? I saw her on the bridge near Dihua Marsh during my morning training. She looked okay. a little upset, so I didn't want to disturb her. Okay. Upset? Oh no! What should we do? Was it something we said last night? Oh, Paimon's worried! We should go find her. I agree. If she's run into some kind of trouble, I'd like to help her. <gasps> You're all going? Then I'm coming too! Shall we start with the bridge? We're all here a little early, so there should be time. Good idea. We'll be back in a jiffy. Alright. Part 3 has begun. Look for Kari Ro at... Oh, just a few... Just um, about 170-ish um, meters from here. So I'll just... We'll walk, we'll walk, we'll walk. I see a peak. Run! Woo! Oh, so this is the place? We ran into her here yesterday too. She looked like something was weighing on her mind then as well. It's also not far from where we were dropping those leaves. Huh. Leaves? Oh, right. We were so busy matching couplets we forgot to mention. You tell everyone about your inspiration walk yesterday. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder... Could Miss Callie Roy have been the one who wrote that poem on the leaf? Hmm? What makes you say that? Possible. Oh, sorry. Uh, nothing. Well, uh, nothing concrete. Uh, just a hunch, I guess. It's just that poem on the leaf kind of gave me the same feeling as when I saw her yesterday. It's so much sadness. Now that you mention it, this is upstream from where we found the poem. Mm -hmm. Hey, look! Over there! Another leaf! Wow, you're 
right? So chase after the leaf. Switch. Guess I'll swim. Engage. I repeat, do not engage. Can't you just fly over and grab it? Um, but Paimon can swim. What if Paimon accidentally falls into the water? Whoa. fighting guys yeah. switching back I believe it was underneath right The desire remains, but the time is past. The boy by the spring grows frail too fast. But when dreams flow to fruition, where streams join the sea, we'll journey on in endless reverie. Just focus on finding her first. Based on the current and accounting for wind strength, everyone, please follow me. Right. Nine hundred and ninety-five minutes. This should be far enough upstream. Let's split up and search the area. All right. Yeah, ambushed. Underestimate the Hello, power of the okay? bloom. What's that? And it's yeah. a huge water droplet. This is exactly what I saw the other day. Kelly Ho? Huh? Why are you all looking at me like that? Oh no. My body is it? Yes, it is. That voice is definitely Kelly Roy's. The water droplet turns back into Kelly Hoy's human form oh, before. No. Uh, blah, 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 so fast! So much energy? How did you. What's going on here? Miss Kelly Roy, are you some kind of adeptus? Well. 
kind of saw it coming. I'm so sorry for deceiving you all for so long. And yep, I was right. Actually, I'm an Oceanid who flowed here from Fontaine long ago. What's an Oceanid? Ah, the Grandmasters mentioned them before. The Oceanids were the familiars of the former Hydro Archon. Uh, they all fled Fontaine after the Archon died and uh, settled across the world. Yep. That's correct. Though, to tell you the truth, I can't even completely recall how I found myself here. I have a vague impression of my ancestral home, but I can't recall clearly anything I saw on my journey. All I know is that by the time I arrived in Mondstadt, I had lost most of my power and couldn't even sustain a physical form. Oof. Eventually, I settled in a place called Springvale, where I slowly began to regain my power. Okay. Springvale is a serene and beautiful place. The water that flows through there is clear and pure, just like the hearts of the people who dwell there. So you're the Spring Fairy of Springvale? Yes, Seems Diona. Like and I remember you too, you know. When you were little, you often came to the spring at night to speak with me. Really? You're not messing with me, are you? I... Oh, I always thought that was just a local legend. Your favorite little pillow, the fish one? Its name is Bubbles, is it not? Ah, uh, yep! All those childhood memories. What just a dream. So, if this is true, then all those things written on the leaves. The moonlight flows like silken honey. The boy by the string grows old and frail. I see. So you were the ones who found my leaf. Yep. Well, you are correct. The spring fairy and heart of clear springs is me. No wonder you were asking us so many questions about it. So, the boy from the story is Finch. I always Who's loved Finch? listening to people's dreams, and still do to this day. Whether they're beautiful, sad, or filled with emotions I couldn't understand at the time. One night, a little boy came to the spring. The tears that fell from his face were more fragile than a moonbeam, and purer than the morning dew. I like humans the and wanted to understand them better. Genshin team, please, for the love of mankind, the fix the leak scene. His tears that were then a mystery to me. And so you became friends. Yes, we often met under the stars, sharing our stories with one another. Sometimes we'd stay up all night and see who would hear the first bird chirping from the boughs. Or the first cicada of summer. Aww, that sounds lovely. But one day, just like the book says, I saw an emotion in Finch's eyes that I couldn't reciprocate. I felt out of my depth in uncharted waters. But I knew all too well that we lock folk face a very different fate from that of humans. Whatever was happening, I didn't want it to lead to Finch writing a chapter of his life that he would later come to regret. So, I fled, and never appeared before him again. Oh, Kelly Roy. My strength returns very slowly, and even after decades, I can only sustain a physical form for a very short time. I once mm. hoped that Finch would be able to move on, and meet me when the stars in the night sky have all gone out. Mm. And after seeing so many people's stories and hearing about all their dreams, I have gradually come to understand Finch's heart. This feeling of wanting to respond to his feelings is surging relentlessly in my chest, and I can no longer restrain it. But I'm also scared. Scared that if I go and see him now, I'll bring nothing but disappointment. And even more pain when it comes time to part. Oh. It really is a difficult choice. Mm. Please go see him. Huh? 
N I know Grandpa Finch, and he's a really kind person. When I was struggling to learn how to draw maps, he was always encouraging me, telling me not to give up, always keep trying, and get out there and have some adventures. He often tells me stories about his past, but I've never once seen a look of regret or sadness in his face. And even though Grandpa Finch loves adventures, he still stands there by the spring every day, as if he's waiting for something. I believe that he's serious about his feelings for you, Miss Calliroy. He's never stopped hoping that he'll see you again one day. So if you want to see him too, then what are you waiting for? <gasps> wow. Huh? Uh, I... I... Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit too excited and... And I just thought... Well, it just sort of came out. Mm. I understand. Do what must be done. That settles it. I've decided. I will go back and see Finch. Good. You will? You're amazing. That's great. But I'd like to ask all of you for some help. Sure. Just say the word. We'll help you any way we can. Would you come to Springvale with me and help to bring Finch to my side? I cannot maintain this form for much longer, and I'm worried others will see me how I was just before. Leave it to me! I'm really close with Grandpa Finch! Also, please keep Finch's in my secret. I wouldn't want Springvale's tranquil waters to become agitated on account of all this. No worry. Your secret is safe with me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> That's a promise. Great. I can't thank you all enough. Uh, now what? What's wrong? Are you gonna turn back into a water tablet? No, I'm sorry. It's just that my mind's racing. As much as I want to talk to him again, I'm still worried that I won't have the words when the time comes. I have an idea. Write him a poem. A poem? Mm-hmm. All the things you hide deep inside your heart Everything you never had the chance to say. Hmm. Okay, good idea. I'll write him a poem. And it will be called Heart of Clear Springs. Okay, so what's next? Go to Springville. Springville is located in Monstat. Okay. to maintain this form much longer. Okay, don't panic. Wait here, Kelly Roy. I'll go fetch Grandpa Finch. Take it slow, Diona. Finch isn't a young man anymore. He's not as steady on his feet. I can still hold on a bit longer. Okay, stay strong. You can do it. So Finch is located at 120-ish kilometers. Uh, I'm sorry, meters. What am I saying? <sighs> Warlocks. I ran out of stamina. There's the old man. Is that Diona? You're back early today. Today is your special day, Grandpa Finch. Can you come with me? Oh? Well, where are we going? 
and then all of a sudden it went from nighttime back to sunset. <laughs> Did you catch a nice little fishy? Uh, just come with me already. This is extremely important. But I promised your father that I'd go to grab a fish. All right, <laughs> all right. No need to get worked up. I'm right behind you. That's more like it. Now come on, I'll help you. Draft's daughter is just like him when she's on a mission. Right. Okay. been going lately and even some friends from abroad if I'm not mistaken you do know that today's not my birthday don't you greetings mr. Finch my name is Chong Yu. we all met at the poetry gala and well there's someone we'd like to introduce you to Finch. <gasps> that voice Kelly Roy. I didn't think you'd still remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember all right. How could I ever forget? Although your appearance is different than I recall, back then you looked like you'd stepped right out of a fairy tale. Oh, but I'm one to talk. Uh, of course a fairy from a fairy tale can change forms. But in your eyes, I'm probably the one who's changed beyond all recognition. <laughs> oh, even after all these years, you still know just what to say to make me laugh. I thought you were only able to appear in the dead of night. There have been times when I've wondered whether it really was all a dream. I'm sorry I kept you waiting for so long, Finch. Oh, it can't have been that long. It's been but the blink of an eye, really. Finch, would you like to hear a poem I wrote for you? A poem? You write poetry now? Well, of course. I'd be delighted to listen. I'll hang on every word that leaves your lips. In that case, let me read you a story about the Spring Fairy. Cutscene. Far from my native land I roamed. In streams I slept, many seasons I met as the sun set and rose. I searched for a garden to call a home, and the moonlight ebbed as the water flowed. A soft breeze beckoned me unto a spring. Sleep, weary wanderer, your journey is over. May the dancing petals sweeten your slumber. At dawn, I hummed the melody of a distant stream, and the songs in the night serenaded my dreams. A boy's tender tears trembled through the water, stirring me more than any starlight sonata. He wove me a wreath from past petals and future buds, I crossed beyond the veil of dreams to the realm of flesh and blood. Look at the love that shines from his eager gaze. Answer the call of his heart, lest this moment go to waste. The kittens and fireflies invited my heartstrings to sing. But I was a stranger to the melody of mankind, and knew not how this tune should begin. As the river of dreams trickled into the ocean blue, Every time a crystal fly flapped its wings, 
older it seemed he grew. But I learned to fathom human ways each stumbling step I took, and clouds of confusion became crystal clear in the vulnerable verse I wrote. As seed yearns for soil and trees for the sun, a once foreign melody inside my heart sung, and it cried out your name on every string it could strum. Now, I give my dream to you. May it be in your slumber a sweet spring to quench your thirst. Now, I hand my heart to you, praying my belated promise might meet still with your trust. She finally reviews her movies. Yes. This is how I remember you from when we first met. All those years ago. It really has been a long, old time, hasn't it? Finch, I... It's okay. I understand. Your poem, it... It explains everything. Thank you, Finch. Please, take this. <gasps> it's so beautiful. This is a droplet of water condensed from my own power. Finch, I don't have a physical form like humans. And I can't stay by your side. I don't know how long it'll be before I can change back into human form again. But as long as this droplet remains with you, our hearts will always be connected, no matter the distance between us. Damn. I will always be one with the spring. From this day onwards, if you call me, I will meet you in your dreams. The true heart of clear springs. Oh, it's so romantic! Shh! Quiet! <laughs> You've really learned a lot, haven't you? And you don't even mind that the kids are watching. Does it bother you? How could it possibly? This is the happiest moment of my life. I just worry that once I go to sleep, I won't ever want to wake up again. Huh? Don't say that. Dude. <laughs> I'm only joking. <sighs> it seems that you still have much to learn. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa Finch and Kelly Rowe look so happy. Oh, what a perfect moment. Diona, thank you for fetching Finch for me. I've never forgotten you either. I used to chat with you a lot. Wasn't it ever annoying? <laughs> of course not. You are one of the truest friends I have in the entire world. That's why I gave you your gift. So that a part of me could always be with you. Huh? What gift? Wait. So is Diona's ability to mix delicious drinks from disgusting ingredients a blessing from this water spirit? Oh. And if so, is it also possible that my pure yang spirit is a gift from some being? Possible. <laughs> what? My physical form is about to disappear. Finch. Yes? I've never regretted meeting you or deciding to talk to you that night. Not once. All these long years. Not for a single moment. <laughs> it probably goes without saying, but neither have I. Although, it was 
different from in the stories. That fateful night. I never gave you that kiss. Hmm? This gift that represents my promise and my love. I give it to you now. Paimon, close your eyes. Do it. It's okay, everyone. She's gone now. What? But Mama didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Grandpa Finch. Don't worry now. She hasn't gone far. Just like she said, she'll always be one with the spring. By our side. And in our dreams. Okay. Now then, back to the venue. talking about printing a poetry anthology she said she can't wait for everyone's final words because i'm itching to pull the trigger <laughs> by face. which i assume she meant she eagerly anticipates receiving everyone's freestyle poetry submissions to help her close the deal <laughs> where have you all been i've been waiting here forever perhaps they lack sufficient inspiration and wish to have an emergency communion with nature and with any luck, I'll bet they heard some fine poetry along the way. How that fine? Does this mean that right from the start you... Ahem. <coughs> we promise. Oh, uh, right from the start, you said you would treat us to a nice meal. Huh? Uh, did I? I think this is worth a meal. <laughs> Very well. Since the traveler agrees, then it looks like I can't escape this time. Diona! Dear Diona, could I trouble you to fix us a couple of your delicious beverages? <laughs> you wish. Alright. Well, normally I'd never agree, but since I happen to be in a good mood today... Huh? So, just what have you guys been up to all this time? Why does it feel like there are some unspoken words hanging in the air here that everyone is privy to but myself? Really? It must be the breeze. You're reading way too much into it. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's right. We're just, uh, taking a walk. <laughs> Inspiration walk, since it worked so well last time. <laughs> and Mika is such a, so even is such a uh, lousy I'll liar. You. How about you tell me what happened on the sly? I've just remembered that I heard about a haunted house recently that you'll definitely want to check out. I'm willing to bet that even your pure Yang spirit won't be able to scare off these demons. I appreciate the gesture, but no thanks. Not this time. And I'm starting to think that maybe this pure Yang spirit isn't such a bad thing after all. Hmm. Um, what the? What's gotten into you? Okay, that confirms it. I call shenanigans. Something big definitely went down here. And that's the end of the Waterborne Poetry Story Quest. It was alright. It was alright. But will I call this um, event memorable? I don't... I doubt it.